Hi everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Okay, so I finally figured out how to allow that big saying, trend is your friend. I'm gonna show you uh, some data I've been working on for Forex data uh, concerning the right parameters that seem to confirm on the right selection of currency pairs to get maximum returns. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is the historical set of videos. If you come over to my Quant Labs channel at YouTube, Quant Labs. Okay, so once again, I always do this for all newbies that may not know about what we're talking hey about there. here. You... So when you come into uh, my videos, look for a video called... Uh, February, it's, no, let me just find it here. Okay, right here. Put up a week ago, um, new analysis on many Forex pairs for four, February 21st. From there, uh, we moved along into looking at the market statistically using moving averages um, and some other stuff as well. And I've tweaked it along the way from bad to really, really good. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So in here, uh, this is the raw data that um, my Python script will generate for both daily, four hour and hourly um, data uh, timeframes. Uh, we are using signals, trend lines, Fibonacci, moving averages. I can also generate some peak charts as well. Um, I, that's still open-ended where you can use that for a variety of reasons. Um, for instance, with Peak, uh, that is using um, pivot points. So you could use for next day tr uh, trading. There's a variety of uh, other techniques. Um, uh, I could move ahead with that, but I'm just offering the, the, this chart for those that want to take a look at it um, when, when my quant analytics goes up. Uh, you can also... Looking at earlier today with machine learning, it's similar to this as well. So again, we have signals, trend lines, FIB. That video uh, for the February 21st will go through each of these charts. The ones that I usually put a lot of focus on is the trend lines one. Um, and all that really is, is, if I pull it up here, is this where we're trying to get the green and the red to act like support and resistance. Now, as you can see, it's, it goes back to the prior 500 uh, trading days. Uh, in a vi last video, I was using yearly. Um, in this video, require changes to, uh, to trading strategy for flat Forex markets. Um, I have uh, adjusted it where it seems to work quite nicely. So we have trend lines um, in play, and I'm, I'm using this a lot. So um, the script will generate either a XLS, Excel spreadsheet uh, from the analysis, or it will generate a CSV, one or the other. So if we just focus on the trend uh, spreadsheet, uh, what you'll find here is... Um, and the other thing is for if you have not seen the video I put out earlier today, again, that uh, required changes to trading strategy for flat Forex. One thing I mentioned in there is I've expanded the uh, currency pair selection to 35. So it's pretty detailed. I can definitely uh, expand this once I go live trading. Um, to get live data for the more exotics, like which would include mm, uh, the Hungarian, the Thai bat, the ruble, um, some more exotic type of uh, currency pairs. So I could add those, but those are higher margin risk and da 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 da. But anyways, it's just to get this out of the way. So what we're doing here is to measure these trend lines. I have decided to go with a slope using linear regression, statistically, LRS, and I'm also from that calculation, I'm also able to generate the, um, the, uh, the R squared, which is 
the momentum or the strength of that trend okay on the slope so what I'm what I like to do is I am going to show you logically how I do it um, let me just see here okay so if I uh, try to capture all the data, I can easily get my script to do this, to do the sort. And what the sort does, uh, it will sort the column H, I believe, descending. What column H is, is the slope for the daily. Okay. So what you'll see here are, in my case, let's work with the top three, okay? Top three strongest uh, trends with uh, the strongest slope. And we sort by the daily slope. So you can see here what we have, the top three would be Euro, Hong Kong dollar, Swiss franc and the Japanese yen, and the Euro and Swiss kroner. Okay, um, if we looked at the corresponding, um, the corresponding R squared for the daily, you can see how strong this Euro Hong Kong dollar is. The momentum is not as strong as the other two. So you can see here where our R squared for Euro Hong Kong dollar is at 87 or 0.87, which is very strong. The um, Swiss franc and Japanese yen is not so much, but the Euro and Swedish is not too bad and then you have here um, the fourth one the British pound the Canadian the uh, R squared is quite high so that is something to be on the lookout for down the line but you can see it does slope so let, let's check out these uh, three and then add in the fourth one of the British Canadian which is the fourth one which has this strong trend and you can see some of them are very strong okay but um, they, uh, th th there's a lot of explana explaining to do here, but we can definitely use these techniques. Uh, so what we want to look for is the daily trend line, the two one for these three, uh, let's say for the top four. So the first one we want to look at is the Euro Hong Kong dollar. Remember that's got an R square of 0.87. Okay. You can see here. So uh, let's check that out. Okay, so we are looking at this one. Now, these um, are a little wonky. Okay, so what I ended up having to do is when you look at the uh, overall 500-day period, trading day period for this chart, it's fairly steep. Um, but what I do in the trend is I only look at the last 90 days to measure this daily trend and the reason I do that is because if I was able to show you uh, other charts um, th this was the only chart that gave me a steady um, uptrend um, let me just see here yeah so this was the only one that gave me a steady uptrend over uh, over 500 trading days. I've kept the charting intact, but if you were to look at last three months, that's the only real measurement um, to get a uh, quote-unquote longer term uh, of a trend because um, if you looked at a, 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 nine, uh, a full year, you can't get a real trend because there's so much volatility sometimes in these currency pairs. So you just look at the last 90 days and it seems to work pretty good. So again, here's the Euro Hong Kong dollar on the 500 day. So I'll keep that one open. So if I go back to the spreadsheet, the next one's the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen. So if I look for that one, again on the daily trend, uh, this, this one right here. Okay, this one, it's, it's really flat, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, let me give you, it doesn't really matter, they're the same. Yeah, so it's very flat there. But in here, the last 90 days, it's strong. <coughs> but when you look at the um, R squared uh, on the uh, daily, 
it's not that strong. And that's because it's, it's flat, as you can see. And then the Euro uh, Swedish, uh, S-E-K. Okay, so we want this one. That one's not too bad, but you can see just the sudden uptrend over the last 90 days. So that's why that got ranked. And these are, <clears throat> these are the ones that are really hard to measure. So if I was to measure the whole year, or in this case, the full 500 days, uh, this trend won't be so strong. And what do you care about the trend over 500 days? You should care about trend more on a shorter time period. And I think 90 days is a good time period. And lastly, uh, let me just see, uh, show you the R squared on that. Uh, so the R squared on this one is not so strong, but when you look at the fourth one, um, let, let me just see, um, GBP Canadian, GBP Canadian, where are you? Okay, here we go. Uh, so we want this one right here. So again, we have a nice steady uptrend uh, on this short term as well. So that's why these um, are really good. So if I was to show you a four hour chart of this one on the, on the British Canadian, this is now a four hour, you can see that little spike, but it's really hard to use these for um, next day trading, I think. Uh, again, it's too early to tell, but the parameters that I'm looking at seem to kind of work. But you can see the nice steady up on an hourly chart. So that might be okay on an hourly, but just 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 bear with me here. When you look at um, trying to, let's say, do what I used to do in, in, in December, trying to build an automated strategy around off the minute, it's very difficult to do because look at all the noise you'd have to go through and the amount of false, uh, the false, sick, false positive signals along the way to get you to this kind of up. And along the way, you're going to be probably prematurely closing out uh, positions or let alone you'll see a lot of a lot of negative or losing PL on on this hourly time frame. So what would have happened is uh, that's why I don't really think it's wise, at least at this point, for me to trade on a five or fifteen minute chart, or let alone a minute, because of the amount of noise you'd get over that time frame. So uh, you can see that, but it does overall trend up. Okay, so you can see how these little moves are nice on a daily chart, okay? So I think it's safe to say that this, these, this order is correct, okay? So just to, to add in more filters, what I have now done with the moving average and the statistical view is... What I have is I have two other spreadsheets that get generated. Let me just find them here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me just sort by kind. Okay. So, nope, we don't want those. We want our Microsoft Excel right here. Okay. So we've looked at this one, the FX Trend XLS. So next one we want to look at is we want to do a ranking on the pair. So with that one, what we can do here is if I sort once again. Uh, so in here I've got all 35 currency pairs. So I've measured the slope on the day. Now, this one is the moving average again on the 200-day crossing over the 50-day. This one's a positive returns of analysis. So when you look at, let me just show you, again, these are both are out of 500. Okay, so those are over 500 uh, trading days. Okay, so let me just do this data sort. 
So sort by F, column F, results that is, and then descending, okay. So when you factor in the result, this little formula <laughs> works pretty good. And all it is is just multiplying the three of these, the slope D, the moving average long, the daily, and the positive return, and it's just multiplying them. But you can see the d degree of amount that you would want to allocate on a trading day. We'll take a look at that in a minute for your trading day. So because you have a result of 394 and 75 and 65, um, it helps these two to just show the importance of how you allocate your capital for the next trading period. So obviously you want to put quite a bit of capital into this pair here, the Euro Hong Kong dollar, based upon the trends that you're seeing, be it the slope, be it the moving averages, be it the positive versus negative returns on a daily move over uh, 500 days. So what I've done from there is that I'm able to rank the portfolio for the next day trading. Uh, so this is really good because, again, um, I have talked about this numerous times, but it's it's quite interesting uh, what I what I assume was not correct. Okay, um, so this is how it plays out. Uh, based upon the order of trend. As an example, we can go all the way down to allocate up to, I think it's, let's say, 10 or 9 or 8 trading uh, currency pairs. Okay, So if we go back to the portfolio, what the portfolio uh, optimizer generated, again, we've talked about this, uh, and I can't remember which video it is, but... Uh, Somewhere in here, it's about portfolio optimization. Uh, a recent video that goes on about how this works. I'll let you figure it out. That's why I encourage people to follow what I do. Um, anyways, but essentially what happens is we get we can calculate based upon those daily moves, those daily returns, uh, all 500, what we can expect our uh, expected return will be our uh, expected sharp ratio, Sortino, which currency pairs we should uh, use, on top of if we were to allocate capital, which portfolio strategy type should we use? Do we use, uh, there's um, minimum variance, long, long only, long short, and then we can move into Markowitz as well, where we would use Markowitz portfolio long only, Markowitz long short, or Markowitz portfolio market neutral. But what we're trying to do here, there's one of two ways we can go about to gauge this. If you are trading other people's money um, as overall for industry uses, you probably want to focus on the sharp ratio. But here, uh, if you're trading for yourself and using these, you definitely want to look for the one that will give you the higher expected return. So in this case, this one right here will give us the um, maximum return, or better yet, if you want me to uh, sort it, just to show you logically how it would look, we are going to uh, sort by the expected return column B descending again okay so here we are this is the one we want for optimal now again what I'm about to show you are optimal weighting so these are the FX um, pairs involved okay so they would involve one two three four uh, four seven currency pairs which include the euro Hong Kong dollar euro Euro, Swedish kroner, the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen, the British pound, the Canadian, Euro in the US, Euro and Canadian, and British pound, the US dollar. And what kind of portfolio are we going to do? We are going to use a market neutral using Markowitz portfolio. 
So then we can hopefully expect this uh, 2.59% uh, move using these combinations of these pairs based upon historical data of all of these pairs, analyzing all the different types, and that's what we expect to get. So on top of this, um, if we look at the um, portfolio weights right here, and again, these are theoretically optimized, you will see what currency pair we want on top of the percent that's allocated. So in this case, as I said before, because we know and we've confirmed that just even visually on the trend uh, chart here is that if we look at the um, Euro Hong Kong dollar had the strongest trend as we verified, um, let me just see it here. Where's my preview thing? So here's the one that has the overall strongest trend. Okay. So we know historically uh, with a higher probability that based upon this trend, we should be able to get a higher uh, rate of return expected. So out of that, um, as I said, we should be able to uh, optimize our weights for the next day uh, based upon 10.22% should be allocated to the Euro Hong Kong. Meanwhile, all the rest of these for either longing or shorting will give us hopefully that expected return. And again, that's only based upon historical data. Okay. So in essence, we, if we were to short 12% of our total capital allocation, uh, 12% and short and of uh, Euro US dollar and then allocate along on the Euro Hong Kong, again, hopefully using the market neutral for markets, we should, I'm not saying we will, but we should hopefully um, get uh, our expected return of 2.6% uh, roughly. So I have put out a video when you look at these weighting um, virtually just by using this one or uh, again compared to this one where we have three pairs um, versus this one with eight pairs, we may, I'm not saying we will, but we may be able to um, boost our return a little bit. So if you're betting, I don't know, $10,000, and that extra boost is a bit, of, a bit of extra change. And when you try to do that each and every day and you meet those goals, that will enable you to grow your account much faster because of that difference of, of the expected return. So there's that. All right. So again, it's a very simple, I should say simple, but it's a simpler um, concept of how to go about to allocate um, your, your, uh, your, uh, your capital based upon trends, what you see in the charts, which translates into the data. Um, and uh, again, this is all theoretical. But from what I'm seeing, it's quite possible we're able to verify the more capital we enable uh, towards our, our Euro Japanese yen. We should, we could, not saying again, we could be able to achieve this. So again, if I was to look at, um, surprisingly, let's say to short the US, Euro US dollar, let me just pull up that chart here. Um, Uh, let's see here. If I pull up that chart. Oh, no, that was what I wanted. Okay, so we want, was it Euro, US dollar? Okay, so. Okay, so. Let's see if this is a short. But again, it's a long trend, but somewhere in there, it's thinking, let's see the four hour trend. Let's see, it's coming off near the hourly. Um, 
Yeah, so it's kind of based upon that as well because it's declining. So there is possibility that that might be correct. Um, I will say I don't know if I would go this route from what I've seen uh, just from my own testing on the portfolio. Usually just allocating two, uh, two currency pairs is good enough. And um, again, I have to test this, but usually uh, at the at the outset, I probably would just focus on these two currency pairs: the Euro, Hong Kong dollar, and Euro, uh, Swedish kroner. And again, I wouldn't be surprised that they're just longing. So hopefully that's correct. Now let's talk about this technique versus something like machine learning. Um, I can say that this is much easier to understand. There seems to be a lot of complexities needed to do, put into machine learning to mimic the, the um, trading pattern. The problem is, depending upon your, your uh, time frame, when you look at this kind of chart, or let's just stick with a daily so let's say if you are using this daily versus um, uh, this guy. Again, let me see uh, daily one. Okay, but if, if you were to tell me you're going to build a machine learning algorithm and training these type of charts with these types of moves, and these are just two. To, to get it to do it accurately, it takes a lot of processing. And um, I think it, it just, it's a lot of overkill to get a chart recognized, I guess is the right word, with the machine learning uh, methodology, whatever it is. And there's just a lot of hardware uh, utilization, a lot of computer resources need to, to be able to build something as effective as this using simpler techniques. Just my theories right now. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but uh, let me know what you think. But overall, this is the approach I'm taking. I can then be able to uh, build this out and apply it to other asset classes. So I'm planning to do that for what I think I'm considering uh, non-Forex. So using Duca's copy, I'm able to uh, use CFD as a classes, but I'm going to segregate them out between um, equity and everything else, be it kind of like a, a commodity, if it's agriculture, energy, a metal, or financial, like a treasury or a guilt. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to allocate, uh, to, to run the data through separating those, those into those two categories see what kind of results I get. What I'm really interested in is are these expected return moves because um, you obviously want to focus on the asset classes or the instruments that will give you a higher daily expected return. That's the theory. Um, but I think if, if this was true of a 2.6 or even a 2.2 percent move and you were able to somehow able to uh, achieve that uh, as I said even, even if you were able to get a one percent move uh, overall in a portfolio you're doing pretty good um, and that's pretty tough to do but uh, it, it it is potentially possible but with all the data that I have here I'm not even um, factored in you know the signals so let's say uh, Let's say if I had the, uh, um, let me see here, maybe a flat one. Let me just see if this is a flat. Um, so we want the trend line just for the British pound and the, uh, okay. But you can see there's a lot of volatility here on these 500A. Now, if I was, I want to show you a really bad one. Um, so let's say the British pound and the US dollar. Wow. 
I'm not choosing the right ones. Uh, let's say U.S. Canadian. Uh, maybe that might be a. Oh no, let's do the U.S. Swiss franc. That should be uh, okay. So you can see here it's in decline overall over a 500 day moving day. Okay. So we have here three types of scenarios. We have a kind of a flat line of the British pound, the Canadian. Okay. But when you factor in this one on the signals, these are the signals that you could use if you were to follow this, um, a, like using the strategy, you get more sell signals than buy. Uh, obviously, because it's just trending down. Um, so, but if you were to compare that against something like the British pound, the Canadian, um, let me see here, Canadian, uh, so we want this one, but you can see here again, if you were to trade this, it's not worth trading and, and even putting any sort of capital on because if you were to trade this for the last year and only on the daily chart, it's essentially telling you for every dollar you put on and you hang on to with, let's say, a simple buy and hold over a year or 500 moving days, you probably won't make any money um, overall because the amount of sell signals versus buy signals is pretty well the same. So you, you, you probably make a little bit of money, but not a lot. Whereas we focus on the um, highest one, the, the strongest trending one over that 500 day, like for instance, this Euro Hong Kong dollar, uh, you'll see, you'll see the difference on the buy versus sell. Uh, Hong Kong, where is that? Okay, so here it is. So if I was to pull up the daily um, right here, so that's a pretty strong trend over 500 days. So again, if I was to take that same strategy logic, but only watch the Euro Hong Kong dollar versus the other one I showed, the British pound, the Canadian dollar, uh, and I pull up the signals here, I can guarantee you on a buy and hold strategy over 500 days, uh, you will make a lot more money because you can see there's more buys, maybe 75% buys on that trend. You can make a lot of money uh, with this just one one simple buy and hold. And uh, over 500 days, you, you would make a lot more money versus uh, this uh, combination. Uh, where's my... Uh, where are you? C G B P Canadian right here. So if you were to compare this British pound and the Canadian dollar buying versus selling signals, as I said, you probably get half buys, half signal, uh, half buys, half sells signals over a year using a uh, buy and hold. Whereas you put the same amount of capital uh, for a year buy and hold, you'll make a lot more money on the Euro Hong Kong dollar. Um, and, and that's why we do what we do. And then if you wanted to take it to that extreme, um, which one was it? The US dollar and the Swiss franc, you can see where you'll make most of your money it is definitely, so you have here in the US Swiss franc, you have a lot more sells than buys. You're gonna lose money on this one on the US dollar, Swiss franc over, over 500 days, buy and hold. You will may break even here on the British pound Canadian, whereas if you hang on to this, uh, focus your capital, same amount of capital, pretty well same amount of risk, because it's the same trading logic, buy and hold, you'd make a lot more money on the Euro Hong Kong dollar. So that's why I do what I do on the trends and sort those trends and see which one's the strongest and which one has this, this, uh, the strongest momentum of that trend as we went back to here using, and I can confirm it in my data using the R squared. Now, um, because I'm also using a daily chart, which is all fine and good, I can break it down to 
for buying opportunities by breaking it down in the um, trend lines on the four hour or even the hourly. Uh, so I can do that on top of, um, I have the Fibonacci as well, which I go over on that February 21st video and how I'm using that. And that's a Fibonacci retracement for buying opportunity to see if it's too high or too low or just about right for historical pricing uh, using Fibonacci retracement. So there's lots of data here. And again, we're also using the um, moving averages on top of the uh, statistical view as well, um, which is somewhere in here. I haven't run it yet, but uh, it's in here. Or I can generate it. So pretty powerful stuff. Um, I can generate quite a bit. Um, I'm looking at uh, patterns as well for wedges, flag, and pennants, and other classic trading patterns for you know verifying bottoming process and whatnot to time it. And I can automate that as well. So that's where we're going. This is pretty well complete, but now I'm going to expand it outside of uh, Forex data and, and move it into CFDs specifically commodities and equity based upon either uh, ETF type or uh, a region. Okay, hopefully that'll help you out. Let me know what you think. Later.